Welcome to Jurassic Park. Not even supposed to be here today. I'm just a fucked up girl who's looking for my own peace of mind. Welcome to the party, pal. I'll be back. I'll have what she's had. Death has come to your little town, Sheriff. You can either ignore it or you can help me to stop it. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close up. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Welcome to the first of the Banter Flicks More Than Pixels on a Screen Christmas specials. And on this episode, we're kicking it all off with a Disney-themed special. So, of course, that means I'm joined by the lovely Victoria Brown, our resident Disney queen. I'm holding the news. Hello, Victoria. Hello. That was impressive. Did you mm-hmm. like that? I did. Because I know the last time you got a bit irate, you got a bit fed up of the, the singing and the dancing, because people can't see I'm actually dancing here in the studio. Um, you had enough of it, but I thought, it's we're feeling festive. Yeah. You've it's it's it. Christmas. I'll let it go. It's Christmas. You we, we all have. It's Christmas. We all have our Christmas jumpers on. You've had some hot chocolate, so you're fully sugared. You've actually mm-hmm. had two hot chocolates, so you are fully sugared. So that lets us know what type of brown we're going to get on this recording. And I've had some chocolate too. So I've had sugar. So therefore that gives you, I think my little musical intro for you gives a set of the amount of sugar I've had this afternoon. (laughs) And of course, we had you on. Now, I was trying to remember. I don't know if this was last year, Maria. Yeah. Or if it was the year before. But we had you on for the last time we did a, a Disney Christmas special because we had you via the power of Zoom talking about Belle's Enchanted Christmas. Oh my God, I'd actually like suppress that memory. <laughs> that film, I, I, I honestly thought the last time I had done this podcast was I think in 2020. So I think that's why, I, that's, that's, oh I my can't God. believe, like, because that was the first time I think I did the podcast. Yeah. Whereas now I know you're absolutely spot on. Tim ha- Curry haunts me still. We we had you on for as he intended. We had you on for Bell's Enchanted Christmas, the podcast that I like to say was longer than the film. <laughs> yeah, probably. It took us more to say pretty much meh about that film than the actual f- runtime of that film. But uh, here we're going to be talking about something completely different. And uh, Brian, this is the opportunity for you now as our resident Disney queen to tell our listeners what are we going to be talking about in the first of our more than pixels on a screen Christmas specials. We're going to be talking about the so wholesome and cosy Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas. Is it though? Yes, it is. <laughs> I will it, fight you to the death. Is this. it though? So, okay, so this is 99. Yes. This was out... I don't remember seeing this. Now, I don't know. Did this get a cinematic release or was this uh, like a Disney? To video. This was straight to video, Disney TV kind of territory kind of thing. So you'd obviously seen this before you suggested this for our Christmas special. I hadn't, although it did seem very familiar. So it probably means I have seen it and a bit like Maria there when we're talking about Bell's Enchanted Christmas <laughs> suppressed it, put it in a dark mm-hmm. place somewhere that I'll maybe talk about it with a therapist at some point. Or maybe on this pod. I don't know. Maria, had you seen this? I had not. Like, because that was the thing was I, I think I exclusively watched Winnie the Pooh around the time that this came out. That's not a bad thing. Yeah. I, like, I, I think I watched a lot of this and I think there was also a Barney special that I might have watched. Oh. But I I did not remember this film at all. But whenever I saw like the the titles, I was like, "Oh, I think I've seen these videotapes," like, but never actually watched them. I've seen the cover. Yeah, definitely seen the cover somewhere. Not just on Wikipedia. Cause I'm looking at it now. <laughs> I've definitely seen it somewhere before because I, I think I always remember. I don't think it's Mickey's, but I do get this confuddled with the the Disney's with Mickey's Christmas Carol where they use all the mm. characters from that because yes. I know I think Maria we had you on the TV show last yes. year when uh-huh. we did our Christmas Carol Christmas special which yes. I I love and I still think is the greatest thing we've ever done on NVTV you can <laughs> fight me I'm sorry where we went through three different versions of the same film and that was one of the ones that we used That's right and I love that film I genuinely do I mean I don't think Scrooge McDuck has ever been better what can I say but He does feature within this feature, this ensemble. So there's three different stories. 
hang on, why am I doing this? You're the resident Disney queen. <laughs> this is the point. You should be doing this bit, Brian. So Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas, like our lovely host Jim was saying, is split into three segments, all narrated by the, I was quite frankly shocked when I figured this out, Kelsey Grammer. Very soothing, wonderful voice. He kind of puts things into context for us. So we have three different segments. We have one with Hugh, Dewey and Louie, who I know Jim's not a big fan of and I'm sure that'll come up. We have the middle segment with a very young and adorable Max and Goofy. And we have the last one, which is Mickey and Minnie trying very, very hard to get each other the best Christmas presents they possibly can. Yes. So that's our three stories. I think the best thing for us to do, and I think we can all agree in this, rather than doing our usual typical ramble, well, okay, me (laughs) rambling, you guys interjecting, I think we're going to split these in and we'll talk about each story individually. And then we'll come back and have a general kind of thoughts towards the feature So what we'll do, I think we'll kick things off and as Victoria mentioned, we will start by having a a look at Donald Duck stuck on Christmas. And before we share our thoughts, let's play a clip. If there's one thing better than Christmas presents, it's Christmas dinner. Isn't this lovely? All of us gathered for a wonderful meal. I think this is my favorite part of Christmas. Ooh, turkey. Donald. Would you like to carve? <laughs> this turkey is so good! Your gravy never has lumps. We, we love your, your cookie daddies. <laughs> hate those three little bastards I'm sorry (laughs) I'm I'm sorry this is a child friendly podcast no it's not don't lie (laughs) no I I, I don't know so we have Huey, Dewey and Louie and I used to love DuckTales when I was younger and I don't know if this I mean I know it's not the best way to start a Christmas special by saying they're three little bastards (laughs) but they're three little bastards the whole point of this story is that they are three little bastards. They are, you know, they don't really appreciate the whole sentiment and the idea behind Christmas and the things that one should explore and enjoy in family. Family is so special at this festive time of year. <laughs> uh, all they want to do is go out and annoy the fuck out of Chip and Dale and, you know, sled all day and do all that kind of stuff. That's they don't they don't understand. And weirdly they have no problem in eating turkey. We'll come back to that. Mm. Right? We're gonna come back to that has to be discussed. I I don't know. I mean, I've talked about this before with Home Alone, where as I get older, I was t- saying to you, Brian, before we came up to record, I'm now, now officially in my 42nd year. I recently turned 41. And as I get older, I find myself like the likes of little Kevin McAllister in Home Alone, where I'm like, oh, every year I just want the wet bandits. Just get him away. Just you know, <laughs> just you know, I don't want him to die horribly. Just yeah, just gently, to be clear, <laughs> just just gently, you know, mm-hmm. just something not not something horrible and nasty that he would concoct in his house of terror. Yes, but something that the wet bandits could do, just gently, just break his neck, just a wee kind of one <laughs> move, one and done. <laughs> yeah, one and done, <laughs> one and done. That'll do, and kind of do what they used to do in the movies. Where is it like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and one? Is it Commando? Where he's like he's tired and just kind of <laughs> sets him down and puts him down. Every year, I find myself. I always have the sense of go. Oh, I really hate that little bastard, and it gets the scene in Home Alone in the church, and it's like, oh, okay, I kind of like him again. Mm. So, but come, on, I went off on a tangent. <laughs> I used to love these little guys on DuckTales. And DuckTales, a movie I adore. Brian, take a note. There is a film we need to talk about in 2024. (laughs) That's a fair one, okay. But I find these little bastards to be really annoying. And they are little brat children. And it was a big problem for me in enjoying this story. In the fact that it's so... I have a general thought that I'll keep to the end about the kind of schmaltz of these three stories altogether. Some of them manage to carry it. I think one of them does really, really well. There's two of them I think are just too schmaltzy and it's just kind of, without being overly sentimental or wishy-washy, it's this kind of idealised, capitalised idea of Christmas. Mm -hmm. Not so much in this one, I would say. They're more so in a very goofy Christmas, which we'll come to. But 
this, I had problems with this in the fact that, okay, you've got Scrooge McDuck, brilliant. You've got Donald. You've got Daisy. Great. She's doing her thing. Uh, I'll come back to that in a bit. But these, Huey, Dewey and Louie, I just, I just find them really annoying. <laughs> but feel free. I didn't really give you a point to kind of weigh in. I think it's the weakest of the three. Mm, actually, I don't know. There's two stories on a very similar bar for me. Yeah. I think there's one story we'll come to, the third one, that I do <laughs> love. I, do, yes. I, I think has more heart to it than the other two. But I think the first two stories when this in this feature are very meh. And I think I dislike this one of the three the most, primarily because of those three little bastards. Brian, what about you? <laughs> you you love this, so you have the, the childhood nostalgia for this. I do, and I think that may be influencing how I'm seeing this film. <laughs> We used to watch this pretty much every year. It was a very big thing in our house. Um, when I told my sisters that we were recording this today, we all got a bit teary because it just reminds us of going to our nana's house at Christmas time. Oh, I feel and... really bad now. <laughs> ah, yeah, see? So Don't worry, should... I'm going to dunk on it later. <laughs> <laughs> you're meant to be on my side. <laughs> um... Hello, Mrs. Brown, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> so I do think I have rose-tinted nostalgia for this, but... I do agree that I think this is the weakest of the mm. three. They, it gets better as it goes on. Um, it's Groundhog Day, essentially, but at Christmas. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Um, I think, looking back on it now as an adult, I think because I grew up with two sisters and we're all kind of similar age, we we kind of related to Huey, Dewey and Louie, but not in the sense that we were a little bastard. So bastards. My mum <laughs> might disagree if she's listening. Message um, in, Mrs. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember them being this, like this, dickish when I was younger it's only looking at it now as an adult I'm like they're I am awful. worried I'm worried now because of you making me watch this if I go back and watch DuckTales no Duck, I'll hate DuckTales them. is pure I'll hate them because it's those little bastards and they're just they they are dislikable mm-hmm. I don't even know if I can rewatch DuckTales the movie even with the cute little kind of genie man that's not Robin Williams he's a completely different genie and I don't know but you know what's fine it's you know as I said it's Groundhog Day at Christmas they wish it could be Christmas every day because wouldn't that just be wonderful if you've worked in retail (laughs) we've we've all worked in retail here haven't we yeah we all know the horror that is you know it's like November September let's be honest September November when it's (laughs) like oh the Christmas stock's in oh the bastards are gonna be in soon looking for that and this that and other and then especially I mean I've done kind of retail kind of in supermarkets and I've done retail kind of just working at, at home base where I used to work where it was just all Christmas lights and stuff and people were like on Christmas Eve going where's all the Christmas lights I need Christmas lights and like I don't know I don't give a fuck but anyway I don't know where I was going with that Christmas every day is not a good thing yeah, no. Chris, yes Christmas every day it, it's not a good thing we all think wouldn't it be wonderful because then as I say we've all done retail here that would be a nightmare and it's the other thing I find really weird, though, you've mentioned Brian as being an adult. We haven't even got to Maria, who knows generally what she thought of. We've 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 dabbled with this. These are three, du- well, what three, four? There's about seven ducks in this. In the terms of, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. There's, there's about, a, Auntie, there's Daisy, Donald, Donald. Scrooge McDuck, and yeah. the three unholy terrors. Yes, <laughs> and they have no problem getting stuck into a turkey. Yeah, Isn't this weird? I mean, I know you talk about, Brian, the small hills I'm prepared to die on. <laughs> why Why does a horse want to be a cat? Why does a mouse need a big, giant-sized human, human p- money? But I think this is, of all the things we've talked about in this Disney special, this is, in these Disney specials, I think of all the things we've talked about in these Disney specials, this is the one I think is valid. The fact that they have no problem eating turkeys. This one I'll give you. And they're hanging about. And as the story goes on, they hang out with a turkey. Oh, it's sitting right next to them. Yeah. Yeah. It at one point eats ham. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't didn't pick up on that detail. Like, I I, I was like, throughout it was going, (laughs) interesting. Interesting. Okay, I can see there's a clear hierarchy here. This is cannibal holocaust (laughs) for Disney viewers. It's horrible. Yeah. So on that note, Maria, what did you think (laughs) of Donald Duck stuck on Christmas? There was one moment I really liked in it where I think it's... Well, there's that. (laughs) There's that. However, that does bring us into the goofy section. No, um, I think there was one bit where I think one of the trio, I don't know which one, I'm going to say it was Dewey, I guess, like freaks out 
And then he goes, I'm sorry, guys. And that just really made me laugh because it was just like such a silly off the cuff kind of line where he's just like, sorry, guys, I shouldn't have shouldn't have reacted the way I did. And then the rest of it, I was like, your uncle Donald is caring for the three of you and has made a beautiful Christmas for you, has invited around all the relatives, just wants to have a lovely time. And what do you do? You don't even read the card he wrote you. Bastards. Every time I was like, read the card. Read the card, do you, Louie? One of you read the card. I, I, I think that was the thing throughout was I was like, every time they just want the gifts. Can and I just I, say, And Maria- at that moment, I felt like a very much older person than I am. <laughs> Can I just say, Maria, in my head, a little scene from another movie popped up there. Yeah. I was thinking of, I don't know if it's Shrek 2 or Shrek 3, <laughs> uh-huh. where it's do the roar. Do the roar. So I just have you in my head. Oh, yeah. Picturing that, just read the card. <laughs> Read the card. <laughs> Read the card. It's not inaccurate. Like, I was literally sitting and was like, one of you little bastards, open that card and stop throwing... Not even... They didn't even look at it. Like, they just rip... It. Yeah, anyway. um, I just was... As, as it went on, I got more and more annoyed. And when they were complaining about the auntie, auntie wanting Jerry. to give them a kiss, I was like, I understand as a kid, you're like, other human beings are weird. But it clearly means a lot to her. Yeah. And she gets to see you. And Scrooge just wants to play some carols and sing with you. Um, I never watched DuckTales. So I don't have any of the kind of cultural reference, like any kind of background for what this is, really. Have you ever watched Tailspin? No. Ooh. Weirdly, the only reason I... I know of them because of, like, I have seen... You know, like, growing up, you, you've seen the cover of DuckTales. But actually, my only interaction with them was Kingdom Hearts 2, the video game. It's very specific. Mm. Where they're kind of annoying in it as well. Mm. Um, so whenever I saw them in this, I was like, well, that's just standard. Yeah. But There I'm, they are. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that was the thing, was I actually felt quite sad watching it. Because at the point where Donald's like, you guys are being way too nice. I was like, yeah, actually, that's that's how you would feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can, you can hear him being like, this is suspicious. <laughs> and then Daisy's like, you're ruining Christmas. And it's like, no, he's never once ruined Christmas. Those horrible little children have. Yeah, Donald, Donald's a nice guy. I mean, I'm going to be honest here. I thought for many a year, he was their parent. I thought, I always thought that him and Daisy, that they were his because they were, I thought, I don't, I'm going to get confuddled here. Yeah. I don't think we've ever met on screen Huey, Dewey and Louie's parents have we resident disney queen brown i don't think so because in my child kind of head yeah mm-hmm. i was always like oh he's just their their dad and that's why they're scrooge's nephews but it's he's not i have no idea actually i was guessing i don't think they are i don't think they're, they're not his kids no they're not daisy's kids whose kids are they <laughs> Horrible little interlopers. <laughs> yeah, they just, I don't even think they're real. <laughs> oh, man. But so, yeah, so someone message in if you know who Huey, Dewey, and Louie's parents are for yeah. real, message in. Our resident Disney queen doesn't know. Yeah, please do, because I'm curious now. <laughs> I did. I do have to mention, I really enjoyed Chip and Deal throughout it. Yeah, like, they're like, so cute. Yeah. They're just so happy with their little train set. And like the bit where like G- one of them, I don't know which one, throws the snowball and then like gets something thrown back in his face. I was like, yes, finally. <laughs> but <laughs> Chip Ordeal is a bit of a dick in yeah. this as well. I want to know, I mean, we're here. We're all feeling very festive. It's it's Christmas. It's Christmas season. Who throws out their Christmas tree oh, on yeah. Boxing Day? Oh, yeah. I know. Oh it's my like, God. boom, it's done. It's like, <laughs> hang on, you know, you've got the 12 nights of Christmas. You can't, in our house, I was told, I think, is it not like into January? You have to keep your tree up. 6th of January, yeah. Yeah, otherwise bad luck. Yeah. So fuck them, ah. they deserve it. <laughs> all they care about are the nuts yeah. and playing with trains. That's all. They don't care about anything else. A, They've... S- a simpler time, right? <laughs> A simpler time that we all wish we could aspire to that's be. That's true. That's true. I think is is the Donald's family. That sounds like Donald Trump. But is, <laughs> the, are, is Donald's family not the same? It's like, yeah, it's done. Boom. Christmas Day. It's all done. We've had your dinner. That's it. I don't quite. Re- I, I, to be honest, at the end of it, all I really remember is that Donald gets sent hurtling down towards <laughs> a massive snowbank. And mm. I did find that quite funny. The yeah. bit where he's like, why does this always happen to me? And I was like, you know what? Me, same. Me too. <laughs> Relatable. Relatable content. 
Yeah, so <laughs> I, I don't know, I mean, we, we've talked a bit there. I don't know anything else we feel we really need to say about Donald Duck stuck in Christmas. I know the three of them are I love bastards. the way I love the way Brian's going to try and defend. No, come on. <laughs> she is. They're wee bastards at the start, but they slowly learn. Because there's, there's one Christmas where they're like, right, we're bored, let's fuck this up and see how far we can take that's it. That's exact, they... that's a quote from the actual <laughs> cartoon. And they completely ruin it. They destroy the tree. They have a live turkey after Daisy has spent ages making the Christmas dinner. Turkey goes mad. It ruins all the decorations. Scrooge can't play his carols. And then the way it's like drawn, it's really blue and dark. And then Donald's trying to make the best out of a bad situation. And he goes, well, at least we still have the tree. And then it falls mm. on him. But you can see it in their faces. They're like, we Did you cry? Maybe. Did you cry? Maybe. Even now as an adult? Or did you cry yes. when, when you were younger? I cried. No. Leave me alone. That's I'm okay. Em- I'm emotional. But they they realise they've messed up, so they try to make up for it the next day. Like Maria said, Donald's like, why is all being so nice? Mm. But they, they realise how important all these things are to their family. And I do think they have a little bit of a redemption there. Because it's only once they realise the very cheesy, the true spirit of Christmas. That's only Ugh. when it goes back <laughs> to Boxing Day when they all throw out their bloody trees. And they shouldn't. Or St. Stephen's Day, if Sorry. there are Irish listeners. Or I don't really know if Boxing Day or whatever the thing is a thing outside of the UK. I don't know. Interesting. I know it's St. Stephen's Day and Boxing Day. Yeah. And clearly for our American listeners, it's buck the tree out of the house day. <laughs> everywhere else in the yeah. world, according to Christmas Disney. is over. I, I know where you're coming from. I mean, that scene, it is, I mean, come out, I suppose, as a, as a pod about Disney, I mean, it's it is a well animated. All all three sequences are well animated, and we compare this. I know we'll probably talk about this near the end. There is a follow up to this twice around Christmas, which uses that kind of terrible three D rendering that kind of Disney used for a while, particularly on Disney TV, uh, the Disney Channel, and it it's charmless. I mean, there's a charm to this, undoubtedly. I just find the central characters too annoying, but. I suppose, yes, they do have redemption, but it's forced upon them. It's not an earned redemption. They're, mm. It's forced upon them. I don't know. They're little bastards in my eyes, mm-hmm. so that's all I can say. It, it's the of the three stories we're looking at. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to not hold my cards close to my chest. I didn't like A Very Goofy Christmas either. I really didn't, because I don't. I have a problem. I think that's why I kind of like Mickey and Minnie's gift of the Magi. I know we're jumping ahead now. In the sense in the sense that in both of these first two stories they've got little brat children. It's like the child in Jingle All the Way. I fucking hear I know he's I know he's Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> he's gonna become Darth Vader in the future. But it's that sense like cr- these kind of Christmas stories, when they have little bratty children, it's like going I'm a sentimental old fart. I know I am, but I just find it's like, I find this really annoying and frustrating. And this kind of trope that Disney in particular kind of does kind of force. I mean, I'm just saying, I was walking to the studio this evening and I heard someone playing in a bar a bit of the Dubliners. And it's like, oh, I had a little cry because dad loves the Dubliner. My, my late father loves the Dubliners. And it's like, so I am easily a ma- manipulated and an, a sentimental old fart. But I don't find any of the two stories, I know I'm jumping ahead, where it's dealing with the kids in this, I find the kids to be too annoying in that sense of, and for some reason they all want to have sleds or what's, what is it he wants in Goofy Christmas? A very specific type of snowboard. Yeah, so I... many tricked out things that he says every single time. I used to know that off by heart, but I can't remember anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I know I've jumped on to A Very Goofy Christmas. As I say, this is probably my least favourite of the three in terms of Donald Duck stuck in Christmas. Mm-hmm. I'm not overly fussed on the next story we're going to talk about. Maria, Victoria, anything last you want to say about this particular story before we jump forward? I have nothing more to say about Donald Duck. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from Scrooge McDuck is an angel and must be protected. Yeah, that poor wee man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Can I ask a question, right? <laughs> I know we're meant to be moving on. How exactly did Scrooge McDuck make his money? Is it ever revealed? I know he likes to swim with his money and his coins <laughs> and all this stuff. One of deep Disney's deepest, darkest secrets, I think, <laughs> there. 
you know, I don't really want to say that we're going to reveal here that um, Al Scrooge made it through the slave trade <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> But um, I wasn't aware I was expecting <laughs> this to go one bit. I thought you were going to say oil or something. Oil, I don't know. I can tell you from Kingdom Hearts 2, he makes his money off of ice cream. There we go. See, that's nice. That's wholesome. There okay. we go. Sea salt ice, ice cream. Just giving okay. people diabetes. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. It. Yes, that's better. Very much diabetes better than, is better than slavery. Yes, ice For cream sure. definitely comes up trumps there. Right. Much higher. On that note, as I can move away as quickly as possible <laughs> from allegations from, from these allegations, <laughs> let's move on to a very goofy Christmas and before we chat about that particular story, let's play a clip. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Santa. Santa? <laughs> Who wants to be the first to sit on Sandy's lap? Me, me, over here, me, 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 I'm so glad you came. Wow, I almost didn't believe anymore. But now, <sighs> everything's okay. So, I want my very own one-of-a-kind carbon fiber torque rod, snappy flex, tip to tail, rail to rail, twin directional snowboard. Uh, please. <laughs> so that's a clip of a very goofy Christmas. I'm not going to go off on a rambly thing. Brian, I'll, I'll start with you. I mean, as I say, this is another one I'm not overly fussed on. But where does, for the, in the, in the, I suppose in the vignette of these three segments for the story, where does a very goofy Christmas come for you? For me, it is the middle one. I, I like the Donald Duck one the least. So when I'm watching this, to me, the film just gets better as it goes. This one, again, I think it's nostalgia because I watched a Goofy movie a lot growing up and the very weird sequel where Max goes to college. Um, I really like this one. I thought it was quite wholesome, but I, I do agree that Max is very much a brat in this. But Max as a character in general is just very bratty. Very entitled and very non-appreciative of Goofy. <laughs> yeah, I th- I do think that is kind of my my problem. I th- I think of the three stories, it it for me was the one that dragged Tennis because there's a whole stuff to start where you've got they've got to get the letter to Coot to to Santa, and it's kind of slapstick and kind of the way you've got all this stuff kind of going on. It's very kind of classic vintage golden era of of of, of cinema, and then it kind of moves into something else. There is a nice little joke about kind of sleigh bells and they're all looking up to the sky and there's a little dog, little doggy <laughs> yes. going in for a walk. I quite like that. But I, I don't know. I just have... Well, I know it's a small hill. I know. I'm sorry. I know I'm for known for these when we go and talk about um, Disney episodes. But it's like, how does Max... Okay, I can get, and get that Max wouldn't know the Goofy's Santa. But I don't really know how Goofy wouldn't understand or wouldn't know that Goofy, that's Max, just with a wee beard, pretend to be Santa. I don't <laughs> I mean, know. I mean, Goofy's not all there, is he? He's got his heart in his right place. Yeah. yeah. I like. I do like Goofy. I just feel it's like, oh, you're unfortunate with your your spice, not your spice. <laughs> you're you're un, you're unfortunate, Goofy, with your child. He's a little shite. Is he even yours? I don't know. It all uh, comes out in this pod. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but Maria, where does this one rank for you? I think this is definitely tied with. Actually, do you know what? I think I would rank it the exact same. As, like I thought, all three of them I ranked equal. The I I slightly the last one I slightly enjoyed more than the others, but like I think the same as yourself. I was like, Max, don't be such a wee dick. Like the bit where he's <laughs> saying to the kid, like, "But like, have you ever seen Santa or whatever?" I was that like, got "You me. horrible, you horrible little child." Just because you're not happy, you're going to make some other kid who is less fortunate than you yeah. unhappier. He shared his car with you. Anyway, um, I I think as well, I, I found it very annoying that he kept repeating exactly what this big toy, big snowboarding He's the kid was. from Jingle All The Way. That's exactly yeah. who he is in this. Like, I want this toy. If I don't get this toy, it's a shit Christmas. There is a weird bit in it as well. And this is what is fully stuck in my head. Is um, There's like a throwaway joke in it. Where it's called CAO Shorts is where Goofy goes into mm-hmm. to try and get the letter. And it's on the top of a pile of teddy bears. 
And it's a really weird parody of, I think, a now defunct toy company in the States called FAO Schwartz. <laughs> and I was, and, and, and as, I, as I was watching it, all I could think of was like, why did they include this? Like, do you they know, thought they were clever. I, I know, but like, there's just something about it where I was like, what a weird thing to like put in as like a throwaway bit that doesn't make any sense unless you've noticed that the one bit the sign that come you know the time the sign comes up i i guess it was a nice easter egg but like i spent most of the rest of the, sh- the short being like what else have i missed what other bits have been put in there was a weird bit i don't know if it's true but when i was doing research because there's a website just called fandom and you can type in any show tv game or whatever and it'll bring you up all this trivia yeah and one of them was saying that the lingerie shop that you get stuck in yeah it's like lumberjack lingerie or something and one of the trivia comments was that's a reference to monty python oh. and i was like even if that's true well i'm a why? lumberjack and i don't care i wear, <laughs> I wear frilly knickers there we uh, go i wear frilly knickers underneath. i can't remember the full song but they have a song about that. i'm a lumberjack and i don't care i wear, wear frilly knickers blah 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 blah, blah. If, someone message in yeah someone email yeah. in <laughs> mrs brian if you're listening message in i guarantee you know but you know that, that i get that reference that is it's not clever, clever. Such cause... a random reference, though. Like, I'm assuming that was a throw, like throwaway thing for the parents. Well, that was that's why I wondered was like, how much of this, you know, in Panto, is it like high and low like jokes, as they mm. call it? I can't remember what it, like it's writing for different ages. And I was like, how much of this is like written with like an eye to both people watching it? I could get when you do that type of stuff if it's going to be. This is not getting a cinema versus home discussion but it's, yeah. it's on a big screen because you're going to notice it more but I'm thinking back 99 okay TVs were big I'm not saying they were tiny yeah. but it's just like if it's going to be watched I do mostly on the small screen I kind of don't get the point in doing all that kind of stuff but I guess it's it's there it's a writer can sit back now what how many years 24 years yeah. since and say well oh I did that joke that's true I did that joke that's, That's me. And that, that <laughs> grandkids it, are looking at him like, yes, we know. <laughs> Says it every Christmas. <laughs> I was a huge Monty Python fan, I'll have you know. <laughs> I think, yeah, I, th- I think I th- that was my overarching thought about Goofy in this was, why did they put that in? But otherwise, I think for me, what annoyed me the whole way through was like, I understand that like they're writing this about like not spoiling the magic of Christmas for other people. But Goofy still believed in Santa. And Goofy is an adult. I've got questions. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I, and I understand that they were trying to be like, always believe in the magic of Christmas. Mm-hmm. But a part of my head was like, how old is Goofy? How long, <laughs> you know, how long is this? Maria, I want to, <laughs> I want to ask. Yeah. So in that situation. Yeah. Would you feel the need to, to pull uh, Goofy aside and have a little talk? I, I think Absolutely. Like, I'd be the neighbours going like, hey, I'm really glad that you cooked dinner for us, but, like, Goofy, Santa's not real. <laughs> um, do, you know I love? do you know what I really liked about that, Victoria? Maria leaned in <laughs> and stared at me straight in the eyes as if to go... very dramatic. As if to go for a second there. It's like, Jim, we need to step aside. We need to have a little talk. <laughs> like, okay. I, uh, I yes. just, as, as somebody who believed in the Tooth Fairy for too long... Till last week till about two minutes no um <laughs> like it, it's that thing of like i i understand the magic is still real and that's a lovely thing but like i, I, I don't know there's a whole part near the end where they're talking about like the magic of santa and you gotta believe in santa and then I, and it put me into a bit of a, like a quandary where i was like if i had children would i tell them about santa at what age i was wondering that as well because i'm kind of like how old's max in this like yeah i thought seven, he was a teenager eight? Well, like just for any you younger tell? listeners <laughs> listening, even though I've already done a lot of swear words, effing and the jeffing. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, maybe pause this bit and go talk to your mum and your daddy and see kind of uh, we can spoil this because on that note, I remember very vividly last year uh, in my other line of profession, you would know through this wonderful professional voice that I have, I read the news and Q Radio and maybe slightly earlier, kind of November time, I remember a list of the top toys being released yeah and it was a big thing about last year with cost of living crisis that eight of the ten toys were under 20 pounds and i was like i have to go do the headlines in the half hour and i was like well i don't want to tell you know because kids are going to school i don't want to say 
my parents are getting the Christmas presents. Yeah. So I said, I went on, I was like, well, where am I going to work this round? It's like, okay, got it. Coming up tonight, whatever the news was this morning, that's how I read it. And then it's like, <laughs> and finally, the top toys have been released. And guys, guess what? Even the cost of living crisis is hitting Santa's workshop. As yeah. the top 20 toys, or whatever it was, the toys, an hour went past. Head of the station phoned me and was like, oh, can you come into the office and have a talk? It's like, okay. And a person had phoned in and complained because I had said that the Santa, their exact words were, Santa should be sacred, special, a bit like Goofy. <laughs> and that um, her 10-year-old son no longer believed because of that. And I was like, 10 years old, you're not maybe need to have a talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but... I, I I get it. Cost of living comment is what pushed him over the edge. I think he yeah. was already there. Yeah, yeah. His day, I think he just needed the gentle push. Yeah, but it was that. Since I'm like the Joker in Dark Knights. <laughs> like that's you know some people just need a push. <laughs> um, Merry Christmas. <laughs> but I remember it very because I, I did. I felt really shit, and it was that sense of like because I am the person that overthinks overthinking, and I kind of mm-hmm. went to that going well. I would be damned in that story because I could have come in and said, oh, parents, you know, with getting Christmas presents, you know, they're going to find it hard. Then it's like a little kid in the car looking up. But mommy, you don't buy the presents. Santa does. Well, let me tell you about this. <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, I was always damned. I damned if I done if I did and damned if I didn't. And it was just a weird. So it is a weird thing. So fair play to Goofy. It's like, I suppose you've won me back round. <laughs> You know? To get through that far and even know, weirdly, yeah, believe in Santa, but also dress up as Santa, mm. so that someone would believe Santa exists. Weird. There's levels to it. Weird. <laughs> this is possibly the most complex story Disney's ever written. <laughs> <laughs> and we all dismissed it. <laughs> yes. Brian, you're being very quiet. No, I'm just. I'm thinking. I I do genuinely like this story again taking Max being a brat out of it Goofy is just one of the most wholesome Disney characters ever like he he goes around to the neighbour's house and makes them Christmas dinner because relatable cost of living crisis this poor family next door mm-hmm. can't afford to have a proper Christmas dinner on the other side he's got Pete yeah he's, oh, oh, he's a dick he's so he's, he's great in this because he's such a dick but Goofy goes out of his way to help this little family and makes some dinner and doesn't expect anything for it. He just does it because it's the right thing to do. And he's trying to teach Max that that's what you should be doing. But Max is so busy worrying about his bloody skateboard with the (laughs) three sentence long introduction into whatever it is. Yeah. But again, Max does have a little bit of a redemption because he goes and shares this sacred skateboard with the wee kid next door. So there's, there's some, but is that just Disney being Disney and forcing that sentimentality on you. Not all her- not all heroes wear capes. And some of them get to get their skateboards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get it's all three of these. I kind of play, I've already mentioned this in, in the first story. There is just smolchiness to them. There is this kind of mm-hmm. s- forced kind of this idea of what Christmas is and I remember saying to you I can't remember what pod we were talking might have actually been on the Enchanted Christmas special from from last year where I kind of said it's it's this idea it's like I'll never be the person who'll take a piss out of someone's Christmas tree no matter how big or small it is because it's what it means to that person but it's this sense of kind of it all of the particularly in the first two stories is this idea of of what Christmas means and how it brings what what's needed to bring happiness in that sense so I personally think that Max should never have gotten the skateboard. That the kid next door should have got it. That would have fucking taught him. That's true. And he would have learned the, f- the true meaning of Christmas. <laughs> Sometimes you ask Santa for a Mega Drive and you get a Master System. Fuck you, St. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. But anyway, sorry. But no, it's, it's this kind of schmalsiness. And I know... The next story we're going to talk about is even more schmaltzy, <laughs> but I kind of—it's more—it's the of the three. It's the most charming, I think, of the three stories. It's the strongest for me, anyway. Possibly because there's no kids in it. I don't know, and that's not to say I'm anti kids. It's just I, Disney has this thing. As already said, it's the particularly in these type of stories, 
Okay, other than Tiny Tim. Yeah. yeah. Tiny Tim. Other than other than Tiny Tim, and I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Pardon me. I'm trying to think off the top of my head, but in particularly in these kind of Christmassy stories, there's that kind of trope that they use—a the little brat child that is either yeah. gets what he wants, and then the parents get his love, him, his or her love, or. He learns the true meaning of Christmas, <laughs> that you don't always need the toys for happiness. Yes, you do, if it's a mega drive. But anyway, <laughs> um, I think Mickey and Minnie's Gift of the Mouth, because I think it's adults, and they're both trying to like get the perfect gift for each other. And all they really need is each other. Each other is their perfect gift. Oh, would that make it more special for the audience? <laughs> I'm curious to know. Just I, I think we know what Jim would have really liked as one of those Me gifts. Me no. But what gift... Did you really want for Christmas that one year you did get or you maybe got something slightly different? Because I think that's the one thing I don't like about this story is because, like, obviously, there's the magic of Santa. But, like, it's your parents that bought it. They've had to work to buy that so that you can enjoy it on Christmas Day. With and I the think help that, from Santa. With for the help our of Santa. Listeners, for, yeah. Yes, Santa facilitates by wrapping the gift. He offered them those kind of cl- <laughs> Klarna kind of buy my <laughs> Three payments of twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, <laughs> he'll make it for them. You yeah, just have to, parents have to pay for it. Yeah. But what what gift? Because I I think there's like one or two I can think of. I, I have was... another one, but I'll yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, should we start with you, Victoria? Um, not off the top of my head for me, because most shock most of the things that I wanted were books. Yeah. But my my sister Emily, for some reason, because she doesn't like them, she doesn't like them as an adult. Normally, these things kind of come with you when you get older. She really wanted a giraffe. A real one? Yeah. That's incredible. And our dad just told her that it couldn't fit in the sleigh. But oh, she asked for it good. every that's year. That's a good one. Yeah. How old, was, how old was Emily when she stopped asking for a giraffe? Probably older than she should have been. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why. Because normally like when you're a kid and you have a favourite animal, it kind of comes with you. Like My younger sister Charlotte loves tigers and she has... Mm-hmm. Since she was a kid and still does. So has Emily why, why now? Has she now got a new favorite animal? <laughs> no, I don't understand where this giraffe obsession came from. Very weird. I think she just wanted to like prove that Santa couldn't do it. Mm. That's Mother, if you're listening, please confirm. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? I think for me, I remember one year. I actually. As further context, so I really wanted a Nintendo DS. Mm-hmm. I think it was the Christmas that came out. And so did my older brother, who's four and a half, four and a half years older than me, I think. And because I had written it on my Santa list, and I was still like, I'm going to say like nine or something when it came out. So I was still like writing Santa lists. Mm-hmm. Um, my brother was really annoyed because my mum said, listen, we can't buy two. So we're going to get Maria one from Santa, but you can share it with her. But the problem was, is that I got it from Santa. So I was like, it's it's my DS. <laughs> um, and I think, yeah, so <laughs> doesn't reflect very well. Me. We did share it, I will say. And we shared it very well. <laughs> Against your will. Against your will. Because I think my parents were good in that. I think they bought us both games separately. Mm. So if I ah, wanted to so play Mario clever. Kart, so Santa, Donald, Santa got the DS, your parents got the game. I think that's how it was, yeah. um, ah. or something like that. Clever. But I think for me that was one, and then another one I remember really vividly was. Why do I feel this is like you going over past trauma? Oh no, no, this is this is wonderful. <laughs> this is like the, these were th- this is the thing. Like Christmas with my parents was always wonderful because they were like big, big things about like you don't go into the living room before. Oh, yeah, like mine. nine o'clock. Yeah. Like they, like they really did do the magic of it all well. But I, the other one was, I think it was like a specific Sylvanian family set I desperately wanted. <laughs> That's so that wrong. is the most middle class yeah. thing I've ever heard. Yeah, I think I was like six. There's a picture of me just like holding it up, like I'm some sort of champion. <laughs> Like I've won the World Cup exactly. You've won Christmas. I've won Christmas because I've got my little set of rabbits. You know. Or they're like, maybe they were little, I think they were rabbits or they were badgers. And I was like, this is it. Maria, this is Christmas one. Maria, can I please ask you? <laughs> yeah. I know this is a personal Christmas memory. Yes. Can we please have that photograph for our socials? I will find it. I, I, th- I do. Think, I have to see this. I hope I've got the right, I, 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 I think I've got the right image in mind, but there is a picture of me holding up a gift as if I have won. <laughs> I will ask my mum and dad and see if they can find it in, in time for this podcast to come out. But it is, it's one of the funniest pictures. 
because I'm so happy, you know? You, you've yeah. ne- it's all been downhill ever since then. In many ways, yes. Yeah. <laughs> See, the only- Teenage years, though, all I did was get books. So I would yeah. wake up, just go down, read the books, and by the time mum and dad came down, I'd be like halfway through one already. And they'd be like, okay, we won't see you for the rest of Christmas. <laughs> well, we brought you, well, we got you another book just to keep you here. Exactly. <laughs> There's a video of me, I think I'm like three or four, and do you remember those um, big like yellow and red plastic cars? Yes. That you got and you played outside? That was like my big present, because we always had one main present and then little ones. Yeah. So I opened that, was really excited, opened the next gift, which was a Teletubbies book. Aww. I just sat in the car and read my book, and my mum and dad are going, Victoria, look, there's just other presents. And I'm sitting there like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> is there photographic evidence of this? <laughs> yes, there is. I will try and find it. Let's no. make it a pod special. Yeah. I, what about um, yourself, Jim? See, I can't, th- I can't remember any photos of me when I'm young. I know I've got, there's, there's photographs I love of now of like my dad dressing up. A Santa Aww. kind of goofy and Mac style, mm-hmm. and I'm kind of sitting there proud as punch. Um, quite well aware. I'm just going to add, I'm, I wasn't Max in this situation. <laughs> like, like, I know who you are, big man. I know who you are. You're my dad. And it's like, <laughs> this is what I want. Um, I can't specific. I do remember the one I always remember is getting the, the not the Super Nintendo, the original Nintendo at, uh, at Christmas. I remember getting that, and my dad and I kind of just playing Mario Brothers for ages Aww. at that. But um, talking about presents I didn't get, because I put this actually up on my socials earlier this year, about November time. Sorry, my nose is bunged. Um, around November time, I put this up on my socials. And Mr. Frosty. And I come to the sense that I always wanted a Mr. Frosty, like a little slushy machine. And it's yeah. like he was yeah. like he was the snowman, and it was all in his tummy, and he got to mix flavored ice. Mm, looks so yummy. <laughs> Uh, I never got one, and I actually—I've never actually had as many kind of interactions with people that both I know and people that maybe listen to Q or just random people, mentalists. But thanks for following me <laughs> on- online. And they were like, "Did Mr. Frosty even exist? Did, did anyone actually get one? Oh. Was it just an advert for one that you know didn't really exist?" The real question is, why don't you get yourself this this Christmas? I don't think that. Well, yeah, that's I, the perks of being an adult. Go on eBay, but it wouldn't be the same. I don't know. I think I I I think there's a certain whimsy to like. Do you know what? I wanted that gift, and I'm gonna buy it for myself right now. I got, <laughs> and I'll hold it up. Yes, <laughs> I Champion. won Christmas. I'm 41, but I won Christmas. <laughs> um, yes, uh, I always remember weirdly being obsessed with Mr. Frosty. Because I, I I'll admit, I mean, I probably was. And I'm saying this, I really don't like him in this. I probably was a little bit of a Max when I was younger. Because I remember every year kind of getting, not, we weren't posh enough to get the Argos catalogue. We went Index. Does anyone remember, in, do you remember Index? Index? Index what kind is of, Index? Index was like the alternative to Argos. Okay. And I remember getting, we used to get the Index catalogue sent to the house. And it'd mm. be like, right, and I'd be like, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get my pen. Glitter pen's out. <laughs> this. <laughs> This I want two of those, and Mum would be like, "Yeah, yeah, just put it in your letter to your Santa. Just put it in the letter to Santa." Did any of you put your letter to Santa up the chimney? We did, we did. I have to admit, the weirdest thing I ever requested, which just vividly came into my mind when you said about circling the stuff on the mm-hmm. catalogs, I got a Daniel Beddingfield CD as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get through this. <laughs> you know. I, I don't know. I wonder know. if there's kids listening to this going like, who? Ex- well, I, I mean... Well, I feel like the old man <laughs> in the room and I go, do you remember Index? And you're like, no. <laughs> I just, sorry that I, I completely interrupted, but I just when you were saying that, I was like, why on earth did I get a Daniel Bettingfield <laughs> CD? Single or album? <laughs> album. Oh, it's okay. It was the Gotta Get Through This oh. album. It's okay, you got your money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. true. That's true. imagine if you got a single for Christmas. Here's that single you wanted like three months ago. You made the list. <laughs> there you go. I think I got a, a, a single of like, do you remember when they would bring out like the X Factor winner song and they would oh, have yeah. like oh. two or three of oh, their Mrs. performances Brown. on? Like, no. <laughs> it was a Shame Ward one. Oh no. So oh, Mrs. Like, yeah. Brown. It was like his main winner song and then like two or three of like the performances he did on X Factor, but that was it. And he had to wait like a year and a half for his actual album to come out. So did you get that? On Christmas Day, and then scurry up to your bedroom and just play it and listen to your books. Read not only listen to your books, read your books. Yeah, I have a really vivid memory of doing this now. 
this is really humbling, this experience. It's okay, because, I mean, the other thing I remember, <laughs> I think I had, I didn't get it for Christmas. I remember having an N64 and getting Zelda Ocarina of Time. Amazing. And just being like, right, boom, I'm not, I'm not going to see you over Christmas at all. <laughs> so I'll come down for dinner, Christmas Day, and then Boxing Day, my cousins came to visit. I was like, yeah, I'm just... Literally was that guy in the, all the Christmas movies. Like, <laughs> say, yeah, yeah, I'm just playing. I say, what time's dinner? Five o'clock. I can play it. You can all sit in the bedroom and watch me play. But that's about it. No, no, no. You can't touch the controller. You'll wreck it. <laughs> but yes. Um, so I was a, a, a brat child. Um, I was Max. And that's why I hate him. I, I, I've learned. I've learned now. I'm a better person. I like to. I like to imagine. So anyway. Right. At one point, we were talking about <laughs> a very goofy Christmas. And then at a certain it- point. We stopped. I think we got to know each other a little bit better. Yeah, I, I feel, I mean, this is what this podcast <laughs> is all about. It's it's cheap therapy. Yeah. This is what I like to think. So I think what we'll do, we're going to steer back in. We're going to be like Inception. <laughs> Whose tangent are we in now? Whose Christmassy mm-hmm. tangent are we in now? We're going to generally, I think I'm the most negative about a very goofy Christmas. Brian, you, you do like it. You have, you know, you have your reservation, but as do you, Maria, but you're probably of the three of us, I think, the most positive. Yeah, I I do enjoy it, but I I think a lot of that comes from I just really like Goofy as a dad. Yeah. I, I see a lot of my mm. own dad and Goofy just that well-meaning heart in the right place kind of thing. Okay, Maria, any last thoughts on a Goofy Christmas? I think I, I was the same the whole way through. I was watching and I was like, what a good dad! Like yeah. even as I judged him for how much <laughs> <laughs> he was, you know, believing in Santa, I was like, do you know what? It's genuinely lovely that he's kind of saying to his son, like, don't worry about what other people think. Like, you know, you, you want to, we enjoy Christmas our own way. Like, yeah, I think that's the thing was throughout it, I was like, gosh, aren't there some lovely parental figures in this? Mm. Which isn't a very Disney thing. Mm. Yeah, right enough. Very true. But yeah, overall, I was like, it's a very, it's very sweet, if, as you say, you know, quite schmaltzy. It is schmaltz. So on that note, I think what we'll do now, we'll move on. And come to the last of the three stories that are in Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas. And that is Mickey and Minnie's Gift of the Magi. And before we share our thoughts, and I'm sure go off on a tangent uh, at some point, we'll play a clip of this little segment of the story. I had them on the hook for a ten foot tree! <laughs> I'm taking what I would have made off of that tree out of your face! <laughs> Now get out of my life! (laughs) Chunks. Hmm, somebody's burning their ham. (laughs) So that's a clip of Mickey and Minnie's Gift of the Magi. We usually always come to Brian first. I'm going to break with tradition. Maria, you know, where are you going to weigh in on this? So here we have... Mickey and Minnie, they're both working really, really hard to want to get the perfect gift for each other. Because that's how you have to be happy at Christmas. You have to get the perfect gift for someone. I don't know. Have you ever thought of this? This could be the tangent we go down. (laughs) And think about kind of what you think has been the attempt to get the perfect gift for someone. But what did you think of this story? I think for me, it's, it's definitely, again, the same kind of level of it's very sweet. I think it's definitely... Along with the goofy Christmas one, like they're both, I think they have a bit more heart to them in a way. I don't know, like I, I, the first one's just chaos. Um, but the this one, I was like, it's very sweet because the whole idea around it is very much like, what do people really like? People put so much thought into the presents, and they're kind of forgetting, like you know, like in this one, I, I was like, it's really sad that like they've swapped things that they value the most. To get something that would have paired with what the if other person... If only they could get by now, pay later back then. Exactly. Where's Klarna? Mm. Where is Klarna? But no, I, I think that was the thing was... I like it, it sounds really bad, but the bit where the guy was like, well, this harmonica is not worth much. I did laugh. <laughs> Which I think was very much against the spirit of the scene. Person, <laughs> I found it really funny that he was like, yeah, this is kind of trash. And then this like... This is shit? Fuck off. <laughs> begins to walk away... Mickey plays a sad tune, Pluto Howls, I think. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, no, that's worth its weight in gold. Um, but I, I think, I think to be honest, it was probably the most realistic out of the three. And that like, like there's a scene with Minnie and I, I felt for Minnie in that where she's 
worked very hard to try and get a bonus, only for the the bonus to be a fruitcake. And the guy doesn't even remember her name correctly. And I was like, yeah, I feel that. And I think that was, I, I don't know, is it just me? Or did anybody else think that it was slightly upsetting that Minnie gives up an heirloom, her only heirloom, and that's viewed equivocally with him giving up a harmonica. A shitty harmonica. <laughs> I, I'm just, I, I literally says earlier in the same clip, this is not worth that much. Whereas hers is an heirloom. I don't know. I, but all she's able to get for that heirloom is a little box. I did wonder that. Yeah. I think it was a forgery. <laughs> False heirloom. Yeah. <laughs> Just didn't have the heart to tell Mickey. You know, this 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 timeless family heirloom, it's up there with the necklace from Titanic. Mm-hmm. You know, it's in terms of there. It's like, nah, all I can get is a wee box for your harmonica. That's it. I, but yeah, I, I think I think out of the, the three of them, I was like, this is easily the one I can relate to the most. Well, I have things, right? So yeah. this is the thing about me. This is probably my favourite of the three stories. Yeah. And probably... And it's not because I'm anti-kid, not at all. I just think it's it takes away from that trope. And it's just two people trying really hard to kind of find a perfect gift for their other half. I've long given up on that. I mean, I love my wife dearly, <laughs> but it's just like, you Amber, know. I hope you're listening. Like, I know, she probably is, but it's like, Amber, uh, do you want money? Do you want money for Christmas? And she's like, yeah, I'll get you something small. But like, your main gift is going to be like, oh, how much is your gym membership for the first two months of the year? Right, that's covered. That's what I'm going to get you. And then I'll go off and I'll get like something from Shit's Creek or Brooklyn Nine Nine or a little mm-hmm. kind of Christmassy jumper, and it's like, yeah, that'll do. That'll do. That's I love her <laughs> daily. And then we'll go off for a nice meal and stuff. I I know at the start I was like, oh my god, I was joking about this with these both earlier on. It's like that's why I, I stopped doing my Christmas shopping really early because I always go and buy some. It's like, oh, that's gonna be the perfect present. Oh, I'm gonna wait to see her face on Christmas Day. I don't know why I went so camp, but it's gonna be. <laughs> I can't wait to see you're going to have the camera out and she's going to be up and she's going to be like Maria holding it up going I won Christmas <laughs> and it's always like oh yeah brilliant thanks um, have you got the receipts like, oh. <laughs> but because I always if I buy stuff early then I'll panic and go oh my god well I've got her this what if she's got me that I'll have to get something else not to win Christmas but just like oh because what if she spent like £50 and I've only spent £40 I need to get something to the equivalent value of £10 then you go to myself go what if she spent 60? I have to get this. And then I get up loads of stuff. And then it's like, I get one thing. And it's like, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much. But I don't know why I went off now. I don't know where I was going with this. But I like that idea. And it reminds me of like the bit in Scrooge when they're kind of like jokingly about it and they're kind of getting each other gifts. And I think she gets Bill, um, oh, I can't remember the actress that's in Scrooge, but she gets Bill Murray's character spoons or mm-hmm. night and stuff like that. And it's sweet. But, but, and my lovely wife will back me up here because the very first year at Christmas time when my lovely wife were together when we were still very much in the uber romantic stage and going to very much, it's going to happen to us all. And it's gonna, I'm just going to say 17 years now um, we've been together. But the very first, I used to be the person like Mickey and Minnie in this where I would go off and do my, Chris, my Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve. And Sunny. And this is the thing now looking at it as a smug bastard that I am. Now it's like, don't do it on Christmas Eve. Okay, no. I know you get paid and stuff. Go off a little bit earlier. Yep. Give yourself A to, to think and not just panic and go, oh, I'll just give up my heirloom. Oh, I'll just give up my harmonica <laughs> and go, I'll get you an air freshener. It's exactly what you wanted. But I remember the very first Christmas, my my, my lovely wife, my then girlfriend were together. I went out, cause now my thing was it's a, it's a, it's a pa- it's a, a learned habit I got from my dad because we used to go out on Christmas Eve and dad would be the thing not to spoil the illusion of Santa dad would walk <laughs> me around to the good old days of Wellworths or Woolworths Woolworths and I'd be like oh what uh, game do you like there oh I really like that game dad it's like okay and this would literally be my dad for like 10 years go stand over there <laughs> 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 go stand over there it's like okay I was like okay well, when they come back it's like go stand over there and I'd be like alright okay boom. and he would go back and dad always he, he knew where he was going to go This I'll get a bit of jewellery for, for his wife or my mum he'd get me a game and something and get something for my granny and a few other bits and bobs so I used to be like I knew what I wanted to go get everybody at Christmas Eve and I was like right we'll get Victoria this get Maria this blah 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 blah, blah. you're all going to be going we want Christmas <laughs> and then we used to go out for a lovely meal or just like a few drinks 
the very first Christmas ever. As I say, I keep coming back to my lovely wife. We were together. We did it. And she kind of, we went to the Duke of York and had something to eat and a few drinks. And she, as soon as she sat down, she, the seat, she's like, never again. Never again. We are not, you're, we're not doing Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve. You're going to do next year, you're going to do Christmas shopping my way, which is very much sounds like the Victoria Brown way, where very early on, um, when we were recording our previous pod, we were talking about Oliver and Co. In November was like, yeah, I'm done. And I was like, no, but that's, takes all the fun out of it. The panic of Christmas Eve. Is that kind of excitement or is that a coronary? I don't know. Will I get to the shops? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, she first kind of, after our first Christmas, she's like, you're never doing your Christmas shopping ever on Christmas Eve. So we, I've, I've, I don't, I think a couple of times I've maybe had to go out and maybe, Oh fuck! Someone's coming to the house on Christmas Eve. Fuck! I have to go and get them like voucher, 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 <laughs> Omniplex voucher because there's an Omniplex <laughs> cinema right beside us. You've been to the cinema. When was the last time to your cinema? Oh, like 2018. Oh, there you go. There's a voucher. <laughs> I went off on a digression, but yes, that was my little ramble about that. It's like Mickey and Minnie, just do your shopping a wee bit earlier. Manage your finances better. Yep. Don't rely on Klarna. And um, this podcast, by the way, is not sponsored by Klarna. <laughs> But if it would like to be. <laughs> yes, if it would like to be. And um, yeah, just um, just manage your finances a little bit better so you won't have to panic. Agree. And also, I want to ask a question. I know Mickey's good with his harmonica. Is he really going like, to save the toy drive? Oh my this? God. But anyway, that's, that's, a, that's a discussion down the line. Brian, <laughs> where you went in on Mickey and Minnie's <laughs> Gift of the Magi? Hashtag last minute shop. <laughs> I absolutely adore this one. It's one of my, it's probably my favourite like Disney Christmas segments apart from uh, Mickey's Christmas Carol. It's just, it's so sickly sweet. And if you don't look too much at the plot holes, it's fine. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just, it's lovely. It has that kind of old school Disney charm and... It is very relatable because, like Maria was saying, you do put a lot of stock into the perfect gift, and a lot of the time, it's like it's a cliche, but it's the thought that counts. Yeah, like it doesn't need to be like the most amazing gift ever to be important. Mm. And I think that's what that kind of tries to get across. It might do it in a very roundabout way, but it does it in a very forced way, in the yeah. sense that it's like you know it's kind of common. Yeah. By the time you can say, well, I bet you, I bet you, know, she's got rid of her early, but he's going to get rid of that. And then they're all going to be like, no. But do you see it coming when you're a kid? Because I remember watching it for the very first time and not knowing that that was coming and being so, like, Did you shocked. Cry? Yes, of course I did. No. <laughs> I cried when I watched it earlier today in preparation for this. Um, <laughs> but I, Yes, it is kind of forced. But again, if, if we're thinking about it in terms of being for kids, I don't think... Maybe I just wasn't that observant as a child. I don't know. Too busy reading your book. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, no, I think we've just gotten too deep into the cynical status of... Mm-hmm. Why didn't they use a Christmas club? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you can get stamps for that type of thing. You can kind of build up every so often. I will yeah, say this, I mean, I, I, I will say this, though. I actually love the whole stuff at Pete's... The, the the Christmas tree loss like he wants to get rid of his ten footers yeah that was again very relatable just like, and Mickey just wants the little family who just wants yeah. a little tree and he's like I want to I think he hacks he offers him Klarna yes he does he, <laughs> he, has, he has a monthly payment <laughs> plan. Yeah, he, he offers a monthly payment plan <laughs> yeah. yeah and you're just like no, that, that bit's quite good and then Mickey's sad it's like again Mickey learn your lesson you probably did this the year before <laughs> don't wait to Christmas Eve Go on and do it maybe kind of Black Friday. I probably wasn't a thing back then. But, you know, go off and get your get everything in nice and early so you can relax. And you and Minnie can have a lovely kind of evening together on Christmas Eve with your fruit loaf. Or your bread, <laughs> whatever. Very, very heavy <laughs> fruit loaf. The heaviest <laughs> fruit loaf. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, and then there's the bit with the Firehouse Five. And it's just like, okay, who's going to save the day? I don't think a harmonica is going to save the day. I I have to admit, I have to admit at the point where the Firehouse Five had like disappeared off because they were like spitting out the fire started <laughs> by Pete's trousers, I believe. Yes. Um, I did find that very funny. Um, but I was like, would I donate a gift because a mouse played a harmonica? 
I don't know. I mean, as a human, if I saw a mouse, that's true. That's true. That's (laughs) immediately denuding. But But in this context, I would be Simon Coyle in that situation. (laughs) Just like I've, I know I'm onto a winner here. (laughs) I, I. yeah, I don't know. It was funny just the way they were like, come on, man, you've got to play. The orphans need their gifts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I did find it very sweet because he's, he's umming and ahhing about staying to play and then the little kid offers him his teddy bear. That's right. Oh, and Because when I was younger, I in my head, I remembered it as he offered the teddy bear to kind of sit and watch and then took the teddy away again. Yeah. But obviously in the segment, he, he leaves the teddy there for Mickey and it's so sweet. And he's he's only got one tooth and it's a really big tooth and he's so cute. I want to know, why couldn't just Mickey steal some of the toys <laughs> and just be like, there you go, Minnie. There's the perfect gift. I stole this from a one tooth chick. Child. <laughs> That's terrible. The his, perfect gift. His tears will make our happiness. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> It would definitely give a different spin to the end of this trilogy mm. of stories. It does indeed. It, as I said, it is the my favourite of the three. I know I'm being kind of, you know, a bit kind of sarcastic and my usual self on this front, but I think it is the one where I know it's sappy and it's sugary sweet, but it just does enough for me. I think it's because I don't find Mickey or Minnie annoying. Yeah. Uh, and I like Pluto. I like Pete. I always like Pete as a character because he's just a perfect little villain but he's not kind of out to destroy the world he's just a dick he's just a, that type of villain and I think he's great I think it's, I'm just reading it here in front of me Crazy Pete's tree lot and it's like no, oh, <laughs> crazy uh, Crazy Pete and yeah I think it's the my favourite of the three and then it kind of all kind of concludes with their little sing song and it brings all the characters together even the little bastards are there and little Max is there on his snowboard or whatever it is, his skateboard. He's there and they do little songs and you go, oh, well, I like Jingle Bells. Can I ask, what year is this set in? Because Goofy is wearing like a Victorian trench coat at one point. That's just Goofy's style. That's right, they put on their apparel. Yeah. Goofy, that's just his style. He's just kind of chic. He does his own thing. So they have their little sing song and it all happy. And it's all, we all want to go off and just go look at the Christmas tree and <laughs> sing some Christmas girls. So, yeah... As I say, it's it's a mixed bag for me. And it's, I think I'm more upbeat about this than Bell's Enchanted Christmas when we talked about that last year. I think it's the Mickey and Minnie's Gift of the Magi does all the heavy lifting for me on this front. Brown is an emotional wreck from re-watching all three of these stories. Maria's kind of somewhere in between the way with me and my thinking towards this. <laughs> yeah. But since since we're on that, and we went off on a tangent on our, the second story, A Very Goofy Christmas, do any of you can think of? I know we already might have pulled in this thread with Maria when she won Christmas, but I did. What What is your perfect Christmas present? <sighs> Do you, I think that that's a thinker? Or have you, or I suppose is a better way of putting it? Do you ever think you've given the perfect Christmas gift? That's Do you ever think you've ever given the the perfect Christmas present? Because I know I definitely have. I've mine. I bought my mum. I've lost track of time because of COVID, so I'll say seven years ago. Full size cardboard cutout of Michael Fassbender. Fantastic. Best thing ever bought. <laughs> Best forty pounds ever spent. Every year I put a photograph up oh. of that up, and it's like, will he not just fucking leave? <laughs> like he's sitting there, and I remember ordering it at the time, and Amber going, "You're not really paying like forty five pound for a cardboard cutout of Michael Fassbender." It's like, yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, I am. I exactly am. And that morning, I put it round, and neither of you've been to my mum's house. And we have, in our kitchen, we have this big glass, uh, like, into the living room. So you can see through. And I put Michael there, put a little Christmas hat on him, put a little scarf. And I kept sending my mum, oh, mum, you wouldn't get that down at the part of the kitchen right exactly where that is. She just kept just, like, staring at it. As I am as close to you now. Staring out through the room and just completely oblivious to the point I was like, mum, you wouldn't just go into the living room and just get something for me. <laughs> and then I heard the squeals. And um, that cardboard cutout of Michael now lives in my mum's bedroom. Fantastic. He came to my lovely wife and I's wedding. <laughs> That's it. So, Michael, if you're listening, you know, you've... I'm sure my mother has talked to you many an evening. <laughs> so I think that is my perfect Christmas gift. That's very hard to top. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I know what mine was, but again, it's not like, 
I can say actually in terms of perfect gifts because we were saying about like books I actually weirdly at times really don't like receiving books as gifts because I'm like I don't want to have just bought this because that happened to me last year my yes. boyfriend bought me books for Christmas and I'd already bought three of them and I was Ooh. I felt like a bad person of it was not great but in terms of the best present my it was actually last year I think I gave the best present I've ever given which was to my mum I organised with my siblings and so my mum for years has had she's a fantastic sewer and she's brilliant at like making clothes and fixing them and everything and she has had so many tins and baskets full of sewing stuff and I was like let's get her one of those standing ones you know the big Mm. the big ones so like Almost all of her sewing stuff is in it. So I, we just made it on Christmas Day and was like, there you go. And mum was like, amazing. And it's, I think for me, because you can give people gifts and they don't use them. Mm. Like they look good or they look pretty and they sit there. Whereas like my mum uses this all the time. Mm. So I'm like, I love this gift. It makes me happy. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm like that with my mum. I every My dad used to always get her bottles of Coco Mademoiselle. And yeah. they'd just be sitting there. And you'd be like, mum, are you ever going to use those? I'll use them for a good day. It's like, Mum, you could be dead. And those could still be there. Use them. Every day yeah. can be a lovely day. Every day can be a Coco Mamazelle day. So, you know, use them. You know, that's kind of thing. But um, I want to know, not to kind of be typical me about this thing and overthink about that Christmas gift, just because you mentioned tins, because this happens in, 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 in our house. Yeah. Because my lovely wife, she likes to crochet. And my mum used to kind of do so, and she doesn't do it so much now. But is that because you'd be like, oh, I really want some biscuits? And you'll go around and you'd be like, oh, there's a biscuit tin. <laughs> oh, sewing stuff. And again, it's like, oh, tins of battery or loads of batteries for no apparent reason. Yeah. Is that just because you were tired of that? The, 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 the hope that, oh, we've got a lovely tin of kind of <laughs> d- digestives or whatever it is. It is chocolate Kimberly's this mm. time. <laughs> no, it was Am more... I in Rome? Oh... <laughs> <laughs> the violins are playing. Yeah. Um, no, I think I think it, yes, that happened once, and I was very sad. But that was in my granny's house. Um, I think it was more just that, like she'd be like, "Oh, where's that thing?" And it'd be like a bit of fabric, and it would be in one of them. Oh. And like even still, like we bought her like a knitting bag last year or no, two years ago, and that's such a great gift. Because it all goes in there, mm. like you know. But I, I think for her, it was more just it was kind of like her box was so it was it was like it was well used, like she'd had it I think twenty years, and I think in the fact that she, like her original sewing box and then it was expanding and mm. expanding rapidly, and I was just like, let's get her something where she can put so much stuff in, and like even now, she still got stuff outside of it, but it's. She loves it because she literally opens it out and it's got the trays. It's it's pretty magical, you know. I like it a lot. <laughs> mm, giving me ideas from my lovely wife now for Christmas. But anyway, Brian, now you, if you've had time to think, you've been very quiet in that front now. See, Surely you've got Mrs. Brian a wonderful gift, a perfect gift. I actually have, but it's for this year. And oh. she's going to listen to this, so I can't say what oh. it is, but she will love it. It's not a physical gift, it's an experience. Oh no, Brian. Yeah. That's like, I've got you a little, I, oh, made, no. I made you a little book. It's like one free hug every day. I'll tell you, I'll tell you off air, but she will love this. Nice. So you, mom, if you're listening, stop. <laughs> well, we'll have to get feedback in the January shows to see if she loved it or if she's like, can I get the gift receipt? Please? <laughs> Not your mom and dad. Anyway. Okay. So I think we've, we, once again, we are now just over an hour and I feel we are now longer once again with our Christmas special, about the Christmas movie we are talking about with our Disney special. This kind of is a weird point because normally we're going to know where we're going to in, in early next year. We, You and I were discussing this, Brian, what we're going to do in January and going forward with our Disney special episodes of More Than Pixels on a Screen. You've kind of mentioned a couple of ideas. You kind of want to go and do some of the, like the Disney sequels lesser known sequels as long as we get to talk about Aladdin too I got food. <laughs> but we don't know so I mean normally I would say oh, we're going to be talking about this or this episode we don't quite know at this stage but all I can say is you know, we will have more episodes we're going to have more Christmas specials we will be back in January so all it is really left for me to say now is um, thank you very much to you Maria thank you very much thank you very much Victoria thank you I hope you both have a lovely Christmas 
Happy Christmas, Mrs. Brown. <laughs> Hopefully the gift is lovely. I've just heard what it is. Unreal. Unreal. <laughs> but that's enough of that. Hope you all have a happy Christmas. But for now, goodbye.